Kelpids are the home for a vast majority of plants and animals in our oceans. These underwater towers of kelp provide food, shelter, and protection for all kinds of marine life, including seals, sea lions, sea otters, invertebrates, fish, whales, birds, and more. Kelp forests also provide a variety of ecosystem services to humans and serve as habitat for a number of commercially important fishery species, such as kelp bass and black rockfish. This is why it is so important for the California Kelp Forest Conservation to keep our kelp forest safe. Our ocean life depends on it. One of the reasons why our kelp forest beds are at risk is because of the endangerment of sea otters. For instance, sea otters are endangered along the coast of California due to them being overly hunted. They are overly hunted due to the resources that they provide, like their really soft fur. Unfortunately, because sea otters have been overly hunted, the sea urchin population has skyrocketed, putting all of California's kelp beds at risk. How are we going to maintain the sea urchin population without the help of sea otters so that our kelp beds will still live? Well, we have a solution for you. Sea otters eat sea urchins, but because sea otters are endangered along the coast of California, there's an overinvestation of sea urchins. In order to solve this problem, bio biologists manually kill sea urchins so that they can't kill our kelp beds. These scuba divers managed to kill 96% of all sea urchins in the years 2012 to the year 2020, but are continuously still looking for other ways to maintain the sea urchin population. Kelp is commonly harvested by corporations for body care products as well as frozen food and sweets. This business has continued to grow for years with extracts found in toothpaste and cleaning products. Unfortunately, kelp harvested in the wild leads to a decrease in size in the underwater, in the underwater forest, exposing prey marine life to their consumers. The lack of kelp in the ecosystem also removes need oxygen from the environment, which many species naturally depend on. A possible solution to this problem is to, bit, is to push kelp farming over wild harvesting, provide more limits on the commercial catch of species that predate on urchin, such as local starfish species, and create fines that will actually affect the company's profit. The more active restorative possibilities is to reseed reefs and need forests, controlling mass herbivore populations, such as urchins, that will relentlessly reproduce and consume the vegetation and the ever prevalent issue of pollution. An effort could also be made to restore the population of the most common urchin predator, the sea otter. With their endangered population, sea otter does not consume enough urchins to stabilize the ecosystem. Introducing more starfish species into reefs could benefit through predating on urchin because of the sea star being able to reproduce at a higher rate than the otter. Another huge problem that our kelp forests are facing is sedimentation. Sedimentation primarily originates from coastal runoff via wind, rain, rivers, ice, and other processes. It affects the growth rates and reproductive success of the shoots. It suffocates the young kelp by covering the rocky substrates to which they anchor to. Hydrogenous sediments are found from chemical reactions within the water, which acts as a detriment to water quality, rendering it toxic. Recent studies have shown that on a microscopic level, kelp development is highly sensitive to contaminated and elevated sediments. There's various solutions to this problem, one of them being storm drain filters. Storm drain filters capture pollutants from stormwater runoff before it reaches a storm drain and contaminating a water supply. There's also erosion control. Erosion control is the practice of preventing and controlling wind and water erosion from reaching coastal areas. There's also sediment barriers. Sediment barriers are also sometimes called sediment filters, which are temporary structures that are typically used around the edge of a construction site or other areas with bare soil. They are meant to separate any potential sediment pollution from stormwater runoff that might flow off site. Lastly, there's turbidity currents, a flexible and permeable barrier that is used to trap sediment in bodies of water. This curtain is generally weighted at the bottom to ensure that the sediment does not travel under the current, which is supported at the top through a flotation device.